सी आई ई टी एन सी ई आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक हेल्थ एंड फिजिकल एजुकेशन द टेक्स्ट बुक फॉर क्लास नाइन्थ चैप्टर नाइन पर्सनैलिटी डिवेलपमेंट थ्रू योगा नाइन पॉइंट ओ पॉइंट ट्वेल्व धनुरासन बो पोस्चर इन संस्कृत धनुर मीन्स बो This is called the bow posture because in this posture the body resembles a bow with its string attached to it. The trunk and the thighs represent the bow, whereas the hands and legs take the place of the string. Let us perform Dhanurasan by following the steps given below. Step one: Lie down in prone position. Step two: Exhaling, slowly bend the legs backwards at the knees. Step three. Hold the toes or ankles firmly with hands as per your capacity. Step four: Inhaling, raise thighs, head, and chest as high as possible. Stretch and bring the toes or ankles towards head. Look upward. Maintain the position comfortably for five to ten seconds. For a better understanding and clarity about how to do step one till step four. Please see the first image given on this page. Now moving on to step five. To come back, release the arms and keep them beside the body. Straighten the legs. Bring the legs, head, shoulders, and chest slowly on the floor and relax in starting position. Please check image two given on this page. Page number one thirty eight. Remember the following points. Do's. Balance the weight of body on lower abdominal region. Arch the back as much as possible. Keep the chest close to the floor. The arms should be straight. Don'ts. Do not jerk or strain. Take the position slowly. While assuming the posture, do not lean over to a side. Do not bend or spread out the elbows while maintaining the posture. Benefits. Dhanurasan is a good exercise for joints of the shoulders, knees, ankles and entire backbone. It is beneficial for management of diabetes mellitus as it massages the liver and pancreas. It helps to reduce excess fat around the belly, waist and hips. It strengthens the ligaments, muscles and nerves in the back, arms, legs shoulders neck and abdomen it stimulates and regulates thyroid and adrenal glands it helps in reducing backache pain it is good for the conditions of hunched back and drooping shoulders limitation person with high blood pressure hernia peptic ulcer appendicitis colitis slip disc lumbar spondylitis should not practice this asan 9.4.13 Sarvangasan shoulder stand posture Sarvangasan comprises three words sarv ang and asan in sanskrit sarv means whole and ang means parts of the body and asan means posture the posture is called sarvangasan because it influences the whole body Let us perform Sarvangasan by following the steps given below. Step one: Lie on the back with the hands along the thighs, palms resting on the ground. Step two: Pushing down on hands, slowly raise both the legs up to thirty degrees. Hold the position for a few seconds. Step three: Slowly raise the legs further up to sixty degrees and maintain the position for a few seconds. step 4 raise the legs further up to 90 degrees and maintain the position for a few seconds to see how the body looks like after you have completed step 4 please check the image given on this page page number 139 step 5 bend the arms at the elbow and place the hands at the hips now cupping the buttocks with hands raise the buttocks raise legs abdomen and chest up vertically in a straight line with the trunk place the palms on your back to support the back 
Step 6. Push the chest forward so that it presses firmly against the chin. Keep the elbows close to each other. Step 7. Maintain the position comfortably for 5 to 10 seconds. Step 8. To come back, lower the spine very slowly along the floor. Lower the buttocks with hands supporting the back and bring the buttocks on the ground. Bring the legs up to 90 degrees and stop there. Place the hands firmly on the ground close to the body. Lower the legs still up to 60 degrees and 30 degrees and then slowly on the ground and relax. To better understand steps 5, 6, 7 and 8, please check the three images given on this page. Remember the following points. Do's. Movements of the legs should be very slow, stopping at different angles. In the final position, keep the legs vertical in a straight line with the trunk. Support the back with your hands. Don'ts. Avoid bending the legs. Avoid jerky action in assuming the final position or returning from it. Page 140 Page number 140 Benefits It regulates the thyroid function. It helps in increasing the circulation of blood to the brain. It strengthens the neck region. It helps in managing problems related to endocrine glands. Limitation Those suffering from high blood pressure, epilepsy, pain in neck and lumbar region, excessive obesity and cardiovascular complaint should not practice it. 9.4.14 Halasan Hal in Sanskrit and Hindi means plough. In the final position of this asan, the body resembles the shape of a plough. As plough makes the hard ground soft, in this asan the veins are stretched which reduces the stiffness of the body. Let us perform halasan by following the steps given below. Step 1. Lie in supine position, legs together and arms beside the body. Step 2. Keeping the knees straight, raise the legs up to 30 degrees. Step 3. Raise the legs further up to 60 degrees. Step 4. Raise the legs still further up to 90 degrees, keeping them vertical and straight. Please check the picture and images given on this page to better understand step 1 till step 4. Page number 141. Now moving on to step number 5. Pressing the arms, raise the trunk by lowering the legs over the head, the toes touching the ground. Push the legs a little beyond the head. Step 6. Keep the arms straight on floor. Maintain the position for 5 to 10 seconds. Step 7. To come back, remove the arms. Slowly lower the back and buttocks to the ground. Bring the legs to 90 degree position. Lower the legs to starting position. Now some points to remember. Do's. Go to the different stages slowly and retain them for some time. Give the support of the hands to the back while raising the trunk. Keep the knees straight through all the stages of the asan. Balance weight on hands and shoulders. Don'ts Avoid giving any type of jerk to the body. Do not withdraw the support of the hand at the back until the legs touch the ground. Do not force the legs to touch the ground if it is difficult. Benefits It gives good exercise to the thyroid gland and parathyroid gland. It gives a good stretch to the spinal column and back deep muscles, making the spine strong and healthy. It helps in increasing the height of children. It alleviates problem of dyspepsia and constipation is removed. Limitation Practice of this asana should be avoided in case of stiffness in spine, cervical spondylitis, hernia, high blood pressure and slip disc. 9.4.15 Shavasan Corpse Posture In Sanskrit, Shav means a dead body. 
In this posture, the body resembles like a dead body. Hence, this asan is called Shavasan. As the name suggests, this asan takes the person away from tension, reduces stress and is relaxing to the body and the mind. Let us perform Shavasan by following the steps given below. Page number 142 Step 1 Lie flat in supine position. Step 2 Keep the legs straight with feet at 8 to 12 inches apart. Keep heels inside and toes outside. Step 3 Keep the palms facing upward, slightly away from the body with fingers in a semi-flexed position. Step 4. Take deep breath and simultaneously close the eyes. Feel complete relaxation in your body. Try to relax all parts of your body. Step 5. Breathe normally and concentrate on the flow of breath. Step 6. To come back, open your eyes and come to the starting position. Remember the following points. Do's. Withdraw attention from external surroundings. All parts of body should be relaxed. Try to be aware of the internal happenings. Don'ts. Do not tense the muscles of body. Try not to sleep. Benefits. It removes stress and tension. It is useful to reduce high blood pressure. It relaxes the body and mind. It removes fatigue from the body. It is beneficial in the cases of insomnia as it helps to induce sleep. Limitation Do not practice if suffering from low blood pressure. 9.5 Kriya 9.5.1 Kapalbhati Frontal Brain Cleansing Kapalbhati is considered a Kriya, cleansing practice, which cleanses the frontal brain. In Sanskrit, Kapal means skull and Bhati means shine. Kapal Bhati helps to improve the functions of the organs located in the skull. Let us perform Kapal Bhati by following the steps given below. Step 1. Sit straight in any meditative pose like Padmasan or Vajrasan. Step number 2. Take deep breath through the nostrils. Page number 143. Step number 3. Exhale forcefully in such a way that the lower abdomen is contracted to expel out the air. Inhale spontaneously and passively without making any efforts. Do not make effort to inhale. Air will enter the body through the passive inhalation. This is one stroke of Kapalbhati. Begin with 20 strokes at a time. This is one round. One can practice 1 to 3 rounds in a practical session. Gradually increase the strokes in one round. Remember the following points. Do's. Inhalation should be passive and short, while exhalation should be forceful. Kapalbhati should be practiced after asan, but before meditation. Don'ts. Do not move the chest or shoulders during exhalation. Do not contract or distort the face. Benefits It stimulates the nerves in the abdominal region, tones up the abdominal muscles and improves digestion. Kapalbhati expels more carbon dioxide and other waste gases from the lungs than the normal breathing. It improves hearts and lungs capacity and therefore good for bronchial asthma. It improves blood circulation throughout the body. It energizes the body and removes lethargy. Limitation Those suffering from cardiovascular problems, high blood pressure, hernia, vertigo and gastric ulcer complaints should avoid practicing Kapalbhati. 9.5.2 Agnisar It is considered as a Kriya in yogic practices. The meaning of Agni Sar is to increase the gastric fire. In Sanskrit, Agni means fire and Sar means ascents. This Kriya regulates the ascents of fire which is supposed to be located in the navel region. 
This practice regulates the functioning of abdominal organs. Let us perform Agni Sar by following the steps given below. Step number 1. Stand erect with the feet apart from each other. Step number 2. Keep the hands on thighs above the knee. Exhale completely. Step number 3. Bend the knees and the upper part forward. Page number 144. Step number 4. Contract and expand the abdominal muscles rapidly for as long as comfortable while retaining the breath outside. Step number 5. Then slowly breathe in. Repeat the practice two to three times. To better understand this, please check the image given on this page. Remember the following points. Do's. It is advisable to practice it on an empty stomach. To practice for two or three times. Don'ts. Avoid slightest inhalatory effort. Do not practice it after meals. Benefits. It strengthens the abdominal muscles and nerves. It improves the gastric fire and stimulates appetite. It alleviates constipation and sluggishness of liver. It alleviates dullness and depression. Limitation Persons suffering from high blood pressure, heart disease, peptic ulcers or chronic diarrhea should not perform this kriya. You are just listening to this audiobook. Narrator Neeraj Yado, Technical Coordinator, Buddy Langlingdo, Sound Recordist, Vikas Sangwan, Assistants in Production, Ruchi Sharma, Directed and Produced by Vimilesh Chaudhary. This audiobook is presented to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.